Hello there. This video is for my Ceramics 2 students who are going to be painting their platters that we did. The slab platters that we created have an incised design. The incising creates a nice little barrier between two different colors of glaze so the glazes will not spill over and bleed and touch one another. The first thing that we're going to be doing with your platters is we're going to be putting the barrier glaze on the inside. Now, what we're going to be using is an underglaze. I already have the underglazes in little squeeze bottles up on my desk. You can just grab one of these. They all should have something in the tip of the squeeze bottle. I often put pins or uh, paper clips, anything like that, that will help to prevent the um, tip from getting clogged. What you're going to be do, doing is you're going to be just putting this black in all of the grooves. Actually, I do have a few other colors. If you wanted to choose some of the other colors, you don't have to stick with the black. I'm using black because I like the nice contrast. When you go to do this, you want to try to be as careful as you can, but if you get it outside the lines, it's not a big deal because I will show you how we can remedy that and I'm just going to go ahead and continue with this. Okay, now that I have finished doing the black underglaze in all the lines, I'm just going to re-plug uh, that so it doesn't get clogged. And I'm going to take a clean, damp sponge and I'm going to sponge off the excess where perhaps it came up and out of the lines. I'm just going to try to clean up the surface a little bit. Now I will want to be aware that my sponge will get kind of dirty so I will need to be cleaning my sponge off periodically. Now that my underglaze has been sponged clean from the areas surrounding the lines, I'm ready to start with my glaze. The glaze that I'm going to be using, of course, is a stoneware glaze. Remember that the glazes that we have are cones 5 or cone 6. This is a coyote glaze. When I open it up, I want to stir it first. I want to make sure that it actually is a nice even consistency. If there's things up on the wall, I want to mix that up and stir it in. The method of application that I'm going to be using is the bulb syringe. I like to use this so I can get some nice detail painting. The bulb syringe has a little tip that is very similar to a tip that you would use maybe to inflate uh, a, like a basketball or something. It just doesn't have the hole on the side. The uh, tip just kind of wiggles in and it stays in by friction. Now the bulb syringe works if that had a little water in it. If you squeeze the bulb, insert it down into the glaze, and then I kind of wipe that off, and then if I turn it over and kind of shake the glaze down in there, I can feel that the glaze just went to the bottom. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit more air, and I'm going to fill it that way. You can try it two or three times until it feels full. It feels full now. I'm going to go ahead and put the tip in, and I'm going to go wipe this off. Now that my bulb syringe is full, I have my tip back in, it's cleaned off, and I am ready to apply the glaze. Now the glaze is applied by taking and putting the tip near one of the black lines and kind of going up to the black line. I want to attempt to be careful to try not to go in the line. If you do accidentally get glaze down in the groove, it's not... Uh, tragic or anything, you can always chip it out with a needle tool, but it's just much easier to try to avoid getting it in there. When you're done using a glaze, you need to make sure that you squeeze all the extra glaze from the bulb syringe back into the jar and then we need to wash this out. Washing out a dirty bulb syringe 
is not difficult if you do it right. First of all, I am going to use a container to catch water. I'm going to do a quick rinse and I'm going to put the bulb syringe down into the water and I'm going to squeeze it out many times. Now, after squeezing it out several times, I'm going to fill it again with water, clean water. And you can see when I just rinse that, it looks much better. I'm going to do it one more time. This time I'm going to fill it with water. I'm going to run it completely through the tip. And then the test to see whether or not there's any glaze in it is I will squirt a little bit of that water on there. If you can see any glaze residue in that, you know it's not clean enough. This is clean. I need to check all of your bulb syringes when you are done using them before we put them back. If they are not properly cleaned, it will clog and ruin that tip. Take your time and be careful as you glaze your platters and your plates to make sure that they have the best result that they can. And make sure that you fill out your kiln ticket with the correct glazes and cones on there and you can put them in the drying cabinet. If you choose to do the back side, please make sure that you have plenty of clearance.